Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Heartgold. So I know last time I said we would probably be doing Pal Park and Cycling Road, but as you can clearly see, I decided to take a little break from our Kanto adventures and fly back to Johto. You can fly to the Pokemon League and then over to anywhere in Johto if you'd like. Um, while I was there, I did just uh, test out a battle against the Elite Four to see if they had leveled up yet, and they have not. So if you need to train at this point in the game, training against the Elite Four can be a very efficient way to do that. But after I saw that, I just turned off the game to reset it and uh, continue on my merry way. Um, so the reason I'm here, even though our Pokemon are not all level 50, is because there is one facility where you use rental Pokemon, and that is the Battle Factory. I did have to look up which one it was, but I remembered that it existed. This is a place to battle with rental Pokemon, right? It's a good chance to try Pokemon you've never trained. You'll learn about new Pokemon which, while having exciting battles. What more could you want? That's right. Do you have a lot of Pokemon? I'm not too proud to say this, but I have only a few. There's nothing to worry about. Do you know why? The facility has you use rental Pokemon for battles. Yes, I did know that. Alright, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Um, okay, so you can do this as single or double battles. Uh, let's do double battles, just for something different. Level 50 or open level. I don't really know what that means. I guess open level is up to level 100. Let's stick to level 50. It doesn't really matter too much since we won't be using our own Pokemon anyway. Very unique music here as well. I like how I've apparently put 75 hours into this game. Some of it is probably just leaving the DS open, but still, that's that's quite a lot of hours and we're not even close to done yet. I've done a bit of research into your next opponent. You can expect to see Snover, Pidgeotto, and Kabuto. First, we will hold your Pokémon in exchange for your renting our Pokémon. So, I guess you get to choose, like, three of six? Yeah, okay. Um, I already forgot what she said. Snover, Pidgeotto, and somebody else. So, it looks like we have fairly weak Pokémon. Um, but then again, so do they. Uh, so our only evolved one is Butterfree and Krikatoon. Um, so let's think about types here. Uh, Rock would be good against Pidgeotto. Snover is Ice and Ground, so maybe Remoraid. Dratini, can I inspect it first? Yeah, Summary. Okay, that's cool. Twister, Water Pulse, Thunder Raven, Supersonic. Not great moves. Okay. Um, looks like Remoraid would have super effective moves against both Pokemon that were just mentioned. Shadow Sneak wouldn't really affect Pidgeotto. 122 attack, that's a lot of attack. Um, I didn't think Shuppet was really that good. Butterfree is okay. Well, I really want to bring Dratini. Um, it is the weakest Pokemon here. Focus Band, that could be useful too. Wait, I'm thinking of Focus Sash. Right? Which one is which? One of them has a chance every time you, your Pokemon would faint to instead leave it with one HP. The other one um, is guaranteed for your Pokemon to survive if it goes from 100 to 1. And it has Sturdy, so I don't know if those double up against each other. like. Could you... Probably not. They probably are kind of redundant. Pekka Berry, Pattaya Berry. Um... Alright. Let's go with... I really want to use Butterfree. I just don't want to face Pidgeotto with Butterfree. But I think they said Butterfree was second. Let's go with Remory. Now... Is this just for this battle, or do we keep them the whole time? That's actually a really good question. Because that's going to change who I pick. I'm going to assume it's just per battle. Or you know what it probably is? It's probably the same six Pokémon, and I get to choose any three for each battle. Once I know a little about my opponent's team. And I did read that um, the more rounds you go, the less information you get. Oh, right, double battles. I forgot about that. Okay, well... Um, Alright, also... 
they said Snover. I was thinking Swinoob for some reason. All right, so Hail, that'll do some damage to us, but otherwise won't be too big of a deal. Um, Snover has a ton of weaknesses. I think it's tied for almost the most, most weaknesses in the game. Uh, Tailwind is actually a really good move in double battles, so it seems like whoever put this team together was thinking about double battles. Um, I really want to use a Silver Wind and just knock out that Snover right away, because I'm worried that Pidgeotto might like one-shot this Butterfree, but I'm also not sure we're faster than Pidgeotto, so let's go for Tailwind. That'll double the speed of our entire team for three turns, four turns, I'm not sure how many in this generation, maybe even five turns. Um, honestly, I've never really used the move before. Okay, and let's use Aurora Beam against Pidgeotto. So that'll be super effective. So Pidgeotto is going to be smart and use a super effective flying move on Butterfree. Come on, hang in there, Butterfree! Really? Wow! I did not expect it to die in one hit. That's really unfortunate. This might be the hardest battle tower just because you can't use your own Pokémon. Guess I should not. Well, it wouldn't no matter what I went for because I was slower. So, like I said last episode, Butterfree is not that great. Ice Plunge was probably going into that Butterfree slot as well, and then got redirected. Hail yeah, will do a little bit of damage to Pidgeotto and Remoraid. Not enough to knock out either, though. Only one sixteenth of our HP. And what is this? Oh, okay. So one of his Pinch Berries. Um, if I got that Tailwind off, that would put me in really good shape, but now I have two slow Pokémon, and his full team is still there. Oh, this is not good. Um, Rock Blast would be good against Snover, and Ice Beam should finish off this Pidgeotto. But Pidgeotto is faster. Okay, luckily it's not being as smart this turn. Feather Dance is going to... Oh, okay, it does lower my attack by quite a bit, so maybe that is being smart. Usually in double battles, you get four Pokémon, not three. And you can switch around to uh, reset stat boosts, or stat drops, and the like. Oh, that's gonna be really, really bad. So, just like the other battle facilities, the early trainers have really weak Pokémon, but so do you, so it's really not easy. Like, I feel like the first seven battles are gonna be just as tough as the last seven battles. We need to get some luck here, and I don't think we got enough hits to knock out Snover. No, and Hale is going to damage both of our Pokémon and not his. I think Geodude can probably hang on, yeah. Okay, Kabuto is slow, so he might have a shot at this, but oh, I don't know. Um, let's go for... Oh, Magnitude, does Magnitude affect everybody? I'm going to go for it, because Geodude is slower anyway, so really Remoraid only needs to use this one move. Um, but it's not very effective against Snover, so I think I still probably want to knock out Snover here. And then just hope the Magnitude can knock out Kabuto. But it's going to Aqua... Okay, that's going to be a loss then. Well, maybe not actually. Because Kabuto already used its turn, and now Snover's knocked out. question is, Hale, if he's any kind of smart, he's going to use Aqua Jet and finish off my Remoraid as well. So, unless he just plays dumb, this is still going to be a win for him. And it seems like the AI is really smart here. Oh, well, maybe not that smart. Now, this is only neutrally effective. Oh, okay. Wow, that was a really clutch win. I uh, clearly did not think we would win that. And in fact, we really shouldn't have won, because if this guy played smarter, he had that in the bag. Alright, so I need to actually remember what she says, and I need to remember that it is a double battle. Alright, Chinling, Houndour, and Staravia. Let me just write this down so I don't forget in two seconds. Chinling, Houndour, Staravia. Staravia is like Pidgeotto, I think, a mid-evolution. Would you like to trade Pokemon? Oh, so you can trade out certain Pokemon. Okay, yeah, I definitely do want to do that. Um, who can I trade? So... Oh, it they mean trade out with the rest of my team. That's not as exciting. Okay, so actually Butterfree is a good lead here, because Chinling is psychic. 
Houndour. Actually, this is actually a pretty good team. So let's keep going. Although, uh, it's funny how fast I forget that it's a double battle, but still, this should be a pretty good matchup. I'm still thinking like one-on-one -on -one and the order they're going to come out in. I'm not supposed to be here. Can we do this on the sly? That's a pretty private facility. I don't think they're spectators or anything. All right, so... Uh, actually, Chinling, not Chimacho, or Chimacho, however you say it. So that's even better. Now, I am worried about that Hound Hour being faster, though. I don't, like, do I go for an attack, or do I try to go for the Tailwind? I just... I really wish Butterfree was stronger, or had Protect or something. Um... I'm just worried this Hound Hour is going to, like, Flamethrower and take out my Butterfree here. And in that case, I can't... I guess the Chinling's still pretty weak, but... I'm going to assume we're faster, but I don't want to happen is to be faster than those two and use Tailwind and then die. So let's just go ahead and take out Chinling and we'll bubble beam the Houndour. Hopefully both of our Pokemon are faster. So Rimray is pretty fast. And that should be the knockout, yes. Alright, how about Butterfree? Butterfree is also faster than Chinling, not too surprising. Alright, so this one is off to a much better start. Ah, didn't want to KO it, and Chingling is a baby Pokemon, so that's kind of surprising. Also, that did a lot. Was that what? What? What am I? Does it have like a choice spec? Like, what am I missing here? How on earth did a Chingling one-shot a Remoraid with confusion? Now these aren't Pokemon that I play with a lot, so maybe I'm just not aware of their stats. Maybe Chingling has. Oh, right. Duh. I yeah, I get it. Thank you. Maybe Chinling has a super high special attack stat for a baby Pokemon, and Rem maybe Remoraid happens to be weak on the special side, but I did not think there was any way that was going to knock out my Remoraid in one hit, not without a crit. Um, and that's great, then he has Intimidate too, so they, oh, they get so lucky with these Pokemon. I guess it's probably random which ones I get and which ones they get, but it's very tough when you have no advantage on your opponent, like having trained Pokemon. Um, Basically, are you smarter and luckier than the AI seven times in a row? Yeah, definitely the hardest battle tower. Um, see, Staravi is probably faster and probably will just defeat me. Does Silverwind affect both of them? I don't think it does. No. Um, let's go for... I'm going to have to attack, I think, both of them with Air Cutter. Actually, let's use Silverwind because I'm not sure if Air Cutter can miss. And uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Um, let's rock blast Ravia, see what happens. Wing attack, that'll probably be a knockout, because that's just what happens to my Butterfree. Yeah. Only 60 base power. I thought it might survive, but if it didn't survive Pidgeotto's, it's not going to survive this one either. And now my attack is lowered by two stages, so that's just great. And I'm guessing one confusion will take out Geodude as well, because I know Geodude has... Um, bad special stats. Probably should have gone for singles. Okay, critical hit. I'll take that. Hopefully Chingling just uses a dumb move. Um, I don't know if it has like Levitate or something, so I'm just going to use Strength. Growl, okay, it used a dumb move. So again, we really shouldn't have won that one, because apparently Chingling is super OP. Who knew? But uh, because of dumb AI, we did. Be really awesome to, like, I, if I get seven battles here I'm fine I'll go to the other facilities I'll probably never come back here um, I just want to get some battle points and be done I think you do get like more battle points for these more difficult ones though it might be like five instead of three it's still not worth it in my opinion but all right Carvana Kranidos and Onyx Carvana Kranidos on so Carvana is what water water and dark um, Kranidos and Onyx are rock Onyx is also part ground. I'm going to say yes just to kind of think about this a second. So against some rock types, I don't think I want to use um, Butterfree. Remoraid would be good, but let's trade out um, Butterfree for something that would be good. Although, see, is Carvana part dark type? I can't remember. I know Sharpedo is. I think Carvana is too. You know what? So far we've been doing good with these Pokemon, so 
Let's hang on to them. Although I wonder if you trade them, do you get a random Pokemon back? Do you get, is it just from your team you had before? Do you get three different Pokemon to choose from to switch out with? That'd be cool. Just don't really know. But that'll be a question for another battle. School Kid Foster, okay. This is going to be a lot harder too once you don't let your opponent's Pokemon. So what we are going to do is hope that I am right about Carvana being part dark type, in which case it'll be weak to bug. And Krandos is going to do a crap ton of damage if it gets off even one attack. So I, maybe I should bubble up, bubble up. Maybe I should double up into Krandos to make sure it doesn't get off any attacks. But apparently at this level, unevolved Pokemon are one shot by everything anyway. So um, not really too much of a threat compared to, say, Carvana or any other Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure this is super effective. Yes, it is. Very nice. Oh, we got our stat boost! That's awesome! Um, Silverwind is just like um, Ancient Power, which, as you guys remember, Olive used to have. Uh, of course, Butterfree doesn't have Serene Grace, so it's only a 10% chance, not a 20% chance, but still, that's pretty awesome. Um, Still probably won't survive a Rock-type attack from Onyx, because Butterfree is doubly weak to Rock attacks, but now Butterfree is faster, and um, its special attack is higher. Speed doesn't matter anyway, it's already faster than Onyx. Um, but it'll do more damage. I imagine this will be a knockout. If it's not, the Leem will definitely be. So This is a much, much easier battle. Definitely went more in our favor. I know, right? Alright, three down, four to go. And it's probably going to get harder from this point out. It'd be really cool to actually battle with like higher level, like evolved Pokemon, but I guess you have to do some win streaks to get them. Venonat, Turtwig, and Sableye. Or maybe that's only in later rounds they don't tell you the Pokemon. Because we're already at number four and we're still hearing what they are. Okay, Venonat, Turtwig, and Sableye. Um, again, I'm going to say yes, just to think about it. So, Venonat is weak to Psybeam, which Butterfree has. And I imagine if a non-super effective Confusion takes out Remoraid. Let me inspect, can I inspect Remoraid? Yeah. I just want to see what its special defense is. Oh, it's okay, so it's pretty low. It is apparently a super frail Pokemon, which I was not aware of. Still, you think with decent HP. And see, Geodudes is even worse. Its defense is great. These guys must be EV trained into like these certain stats, because look at the difference there. Like this Butterfree must be like special attack and special defense trained, and remember he has special attack and speed, which is actually pretty good. All right, so anyway, Venonat um, is weak to Psybeam. Turtwig, I don't want to keep in the other two against Turtwig, and Sableye is neutral to everything. So um, let's can we switch out both? Let me switch out Geodude for sure. Because against a grass type, not good. And Geodude is slow too, so it it's not really ideal here. Okay, we do have wait. Oh, you get to choose one of the Pokemon from the last battle. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, they're all rock and water types, which are also weak to Turtwig, so I gotta take out that Turtwig is what it comes down to. Um, and I don't have a lot of tools to do that. What does Carvana know? Can I inspect it? I can't. So that's kind of sucky. Um, I guess Turtwig is kind of slow, maybe? And Kranidos might... I don't know. Carvana might be faster. I might know something that could do some damage on it. Like an ice attack. Sableye is neutral. I guess I'd resist... I'd resist both Sableye's stab attacks. Let's go with Carvana. Alright, so I do kind of like that mechanic where... You get to choose from your opponent's Pokemon. So if you see something you like, make sure you grab it while you can. He is a hiker. Makes sense while he has so many... Um... Oh wait, no, the last guy had the ground and rock types. This guy has all kinds of random stuff. Alright. Venonat and Turtwig. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead. I was going to use the Psybeam against Venonat. But, um... Actually, I'm super effective against Turtwig, too. So, Silverwind or Air Cutter? I think... Is Air Cutter a special attack? I think it's a physical attack. Check moves. No, it's special, okay. 
has a high critical ch hit chance but can move and is a little weaker. Oh, I see. You can browse that way. Sidium is higher base power but doesn't get stab. So let's go for Solar Wind against Turtwig. Plus, I might get the stat boost, which would be awesome. Um, I guess I'm just going to go for a Bubble Beam against Venonat. That'll be my best stab attack. Remember, it is our fastest Pokemon. I wonder if I should have used... Now, I could use an Ice Move against Turtwig, but if it fainted, then my Silver Wind would go into Venonat. And yeah, I was pretty sure Butterfree was faster than Turtwig. Now, will this be a one-shot? I'm, I'm guessing that Turtwig has better defenses than Special Defense. Yeah, okay, good. I would have been kind of surprised if it could survive a stab Silver Wind from a Butterfree. All right. Oh, it's still my Peckaberry. Not that I really care that much, but still. It's the principle of the matter. So Sableye is an interesting Pokemon. It's Dark and Ghost, and it has no weaknesses in this generation. Uh, it won't be until Fairy-type is introduced in Generation 6 that it will actually gain weaknesses. Because, for example, Silver Wind is good against um, Dark, but it's not effective against Ghost. So they cancel each other out pretty well. Um, all right, thinking, thinking, thinking. Let's go ahead while we're super effective and side beam that Venonette. Actually, you know what? Butterfree is probably a little stronger, maybe? I don't know. I guess I could just look at the stats, can't I? Sorry I'm taking so long in these battles, but I really want to make sure that I win. All right, so Butterfree is our strongest. So let's have Butterfree go after Sableye with a Silver Wind. So I might get the stat boost, which will help me survive its attacks if it attacks Butterfree. Um, and it looks like another Bubble Beam is going to take out Venonat. If it doesn't, this will be really bad, but... Unless we get like a really bad damage spread. This should. Oh, we must have got a good damage spread last time and a bad one this time. Oh well, I guess I should double up into Venonat just in case. In fact, that would have been really smart, because that way if I... If this happened, I could knock out Venonat, but if I um, didn't, it would have gone into Sableye automatically, so... We did get lucky missing the Supersonic. I guess I could have switched out, but that would have been a wasted turn. Wow, and that series set. Remorade is a, a really frail uh, sweeper. Definitely a glass cannon. What does Carvana have? Um, a Cherry Berry, okay. And we'll see what moves it has in just a second. Hopefully it's fast. I'm not really sure about Carvana. The inspect screen is very useful here to get to know your Pokemon. Okay, it's, it's not fast, but it has a great attack stat. Really bad defenses, though. Look at those defenses. 25 points. More HP. Um, I'm more worried about that Sableye than I am the Venonat. I guess Venonat could be super effective against Carvana, though. I just don't know what Sableye can or can't do. I'm going to use Silverwind against Sableye, though. And let me just see. Aqua Jet, okay. So Aqua Jet will definitely finish off Venonat. Sweet. Let's do it. I think I might keep Carvana. Um, I'm not too impressed by any of his Pokemon. Say, how did it fail? Oh, because it was trying to fake out Carvana, I guess, but Carvana went first because it's faster. And Fake Out and Aqua Jet are both priority moves. That must have been it. Interesting that... I See, I always assumed the Fake Out would still go second and just... Um, and just do damage and not flinch. Weird that it actually failed. Uh, I guess I'm ready. I'm not really sure yet. Another Chingling, oh god. <laughs> Take that thing out right away. Fanfi and Snubble. Okay, that's a pretty good um That's a pretty good setup, so let's keep going. Cause I can sort of cross moves here. And uh or actually no, I can go directly into the opposite slots. Silverwind should be good against Chingling, and I already forgot the second Pokemon, but I remembered it was something that's weak to Remoraid. Fanfi maybe? Yeah, Fanfi. And then Snubble is not Fairy-type, because there is no Fairy-type yet. So it's normal, and I don't know. I feel like 3v1, we should have this in the bag. Um, okay, so we are going across the field. And these should be fast, they should be super effective. I'd be very surprised if either of these Pokémon survive these attacks. Look at Fanfi, he's a cute little Pokémon, like the Dumbo of Pokémon. That's a reference to the Cartoon Elephant, not I'm not insulting Fanfi. I think I used a Donphin in one of my, like, Generation 4 competitive battles for a while, or... I don't know, it's not... I'm not really a big fan of Donphin. I mean, it's, it's okay, I guess, but it's nothing special. 
it is another one of those iconic Gen 2 Pokemon, I guess because it was in um, Mewtwo Strikes Back. One of the first Gen 2 Pokemon we got to see in a battle. Maybe the very first one. Snubble was also one of the first Gen 2 Pokemon we saw in um, Pikachu's Vacation. So it's normal, so Bug is okay to use against it. I think Bug is not very effective against Fairy types. Um, I'm trying to remember. That might not be true, though. It might be even. I've only played one game with Fairy types in it. Actually, I think Bug is... No, I think Fairy type does resist Bug. It also resists Fighting and Dark and is immune to Dragon. I think those are all of its resistances. All right, so these battles are, knock on wood, getting easier. But I think it's just luck. All right. Um, I don't know, maybe I should get a Chingling if they're so good. But what else did she have? Fanfi and Snubble. Mm. Chingling might have a good attack stat, but it's it might have also just been Remoraid's low defense stat that caused the wipe or the knockout. And it seems to be fairly slow, so... Ooh, Riolu. Riolu could be tough here. Um, and Ghost types. Ooh, this could be bad, because... I need something that's good against Ghost types. Snubble might know, like, Bite. I didn't... Oh, I didn't get to see what it knew. Um, which would be good against Shuppet. Not really good against Sableye. A lot of repeats here. Riolu is fighting, so my Flying move will be good against it. I think I'm just going to go for it. This might be a mistake. I just... <sighs> Who's after Pokemon again? Carvana. Carvana is good too, because it it knows like Aqua Jet, which could finish off a weakened Pokemon, and it and it resists ghost moves. I'm gonna stick with them. I was gonna switch to um oh crap. I was gonna switch to uh, Snubble. Because being normal type it would be immune to ghost attacks from Shuppet and um and Sableye. But Carvana still resists ghost attacks, and it might be able to do more damage in return. Since it has that really high attack stat. All right, we are up against a fisherman who likes ghost types, apparently. I think it's all just random in these facilities. Okay, so let's see, let's see. Riolu is fighting. So I'm thinking I should use Air Cutter against him. Hopefully he's not faster. I don't know how fast Riolu is. And Bubble Beam against Shuppet. Oh, Air Cutter affects both of them. Wish I knew that sooner. That's kind of risky, because if Air Cutter does... I don't remember if it does half damage or three quarters of the damage in this generation when the move is split. Um, maybe I should just go for Psybeam. Oh, but will Psybeam be enough to defeat it? Is it better to get some damage on both of them? This could be a big mistake either way, but Riolu is, I think, technically a baby Pokemon, so it should have bad defenses. I don't know if it's slow or not. All right, so it's slower than Remoraid, so that's something. Of course, Remoraid, if it gets attacked by Rolu or Shuppet, won't survive this turn. Oh, and Shuppet lives! Okay, luckily Riolu used Foresight, which is, again, a dumb move unless you're affecting a ghost type, so... I don't know. Riolu's pretty fast, though, so note to self, maybe consider Riolu for the final battle. I just don't know how much it does. Maybe I will um, stealthily look up Riolu on Bulbapedia while I... Do this battle. Bear a grudge. I think that means if you faint the Pokemon, the move you use to faint it loses all of its power points. Something like that. Um, so we determined that Riala was faster, but Shuppet was not. Let me check the special attack stats of these two. See who's going to do more damage. Butterfree is 127, 111, so Butterfree is more powerful. So let's use um, Silverwind into Sableye, and Aurora Beam is definitely enough to take out Shuppet. Sableye protected, okay. That's why it's good to split up your moves and not attack the same target. But now it should be Sableye versus both of us, so that's good. Um, so Riolu is pretty weak defenses, decent attack, decent speed. Uh, it's pretty low on stats overall, though. I think I'd rather keep my team. Let's just double up here. Yeah, so because of the grudge. No more Aurora Beams. 
and detect failed because on the second turn in a row you use it, it will only have a 50% chance of succeeding. I'm going to also look up Carvana just for comparison, and I can't spell. Okay, so... Sableye's pretty bulky, I'm just not sure. Oh, now I get the boost when it doesn't matter at all. Um, so Carvana has really bad defenses, I didn't realize that. Um, but it does have a lot better attack. Riolu has actually worse speed. Let's stick with um, Carvana, because I don't think Carvana and Riolu can both take a hit. I don't think either can take a hit, so I might as well stick with the faster, stronger Pokemon. Um, I don't know how to, I don't know if it's Carvana, 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 but um, speaking, ooh, oh what? Tropius, Camerupt, and Sneasel. That's like a real team. Oh my god, I'm definitely the underdog here. Um, did the last person have any Rock types? No. Right? No. Oh, this is gonna suck. Camerupt is like a real Pokemon. <laughs> like, none of these bug types and unevolved Pokemon. Camerupt is a, a threat. Um, luckily, it's doubly weak to water, so there's that. No, I don't think any of his Pokemon are gonna help us any more than ours will, so. Our team has got us this far. I believe in them. What do you guys say? Can we beat this trainer? It'll be really impressive if we do. Um, Carvin, or, uh, Tropius is grass and flying, so it's not weak to bug. It is weak to flying, though. It's doubly weak to ice. Oh! Remoraid is going to be so useful here. I wish I could, like, use Rage Powder or something to um, to protect it here. Like, I would gladly sacrifice Butterfree to give a second attack to Remoraid. Um, the question is, which one is a bigger threat? Camerupt or Tropius? Probably Tropius, actually. Because, um... Carbonate does have a Aqua What else is Carbonate now? Bite, I guess, does something. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is going to be tough. I, I just feel like at least Butterfree could use a Super Hunter Air Cutter against Tropius. Probably wouldn't be a one shot, but it would do a lot of damage and it has a high crit chance, so there's that. It also could miss, but that's a small chance. Let's hope it doesn't. Whereas Camerupt could easily knock out Butterfree, and I don't. Tropius might not be able to. Tropius could knock out Remoraid, but if Remoraid knocks out Camerupt, who's his last one? I didn't write it down. Crap. Um, it wasn't as. It was like. It was a Pokemon that I think doesn't evolve, but is fully evolved. But wasn't it wasn't that worrisome compared to these two? I don't know. Whatever. Let me just go for my gut here. Actually, t Air Cutter does damage against both, so. What the heck? What did I say? I was going to take out camera up? To, yeah. Because I can always use Ice the second. So, yeah, Tropius can take out both of these Pokemon in one turn, I don't think. So, I can either do another Air Cutter into it, or I can do an Ice... Ice Beam, whatever. What do I have? Aurora Beam. So, that should be a one-shot. Okay, I was worried because camera up, like I said, is a fully evolved Pokemon. Watch it evolve into Mega Camerupt, knowing my luck. Um, but uh, it is doubly weak to water, so that's kind of, the, I guess, the goal here is to use type things to your advantage. Aerial Ace, oh, come on, hang on, Butterfree, this is going to hurt. Please hang on, please hang on, please hang on, please hang on. Oh, no, it's stab, super effective. Okay. Um, so who is his last one? Car can Carvana kill it in one shot? Sneasel, that's right. Okay, so Sneasel is very fast. Sneasel will go first here. Luckily, my Pokemon are actually pretty good against Sneasel. Of course, if it goes first with a Dark... Oh, this could be really bad. Um, so I think if Sneasel goes first with a Dark-type move and attacks Remoraid, then this person wins. If it doesn't, then I probably win. I don't think Remoraid has Protect. I wish it did. Um... I don't think Bite would finish off Tropius. I think I have to rely on a special super effective attack. <sighs> I, I, mm. What if I slow down Sneasel? Would that help me at all? Let me think that through. Sneasel still goes first, knocks out Remoraid. Then all I have is this fast Tropius and a slow Sneasel. I can't defeat either in one shot, so... I could use Swagger, but I don't want to really increase the attack of any of these Pokemon, because they do hit, that's going to be really bad. I could go for Bite and hope for a flinch. Bite has a decent flinch chance, right? Does it probably doesn't even say how much. just says made make the target flinch. I don't know if it's 20 or 30. I think it's 20. Maybe I rely on that. Um, or do I go for Aqua Jet and try to get some damage on Sneasel? 
Is Remoraid by any chance faster than Sneasel? Sneasel's just so fast. Oh, this is so much of a toss-up. My two thoughts are... I use Aqua Jet to get some damage on the Sneasel, which my gut says that's the best thing to do. And hope Remoraid can get the ice thing off. Aurora Beam off onto Tropius, because that's the only way to take it out. Or do I go for a bite on the Tropius? Let's do that, because there's even at least there's a chance then that if Sneasel defeats Remoraid... Let's just let's just do it, whatever. Okay, all that and Sneasel uses Leer, so that sucks, but Remoraid's stats are so low anyway. Oh wait, it affects both your Pokemon. Interesting. That could actually make a difference then. Um, but this should be a one hit knockout. It is doubly super effective, even with no Okay, got a crit. I don't think I needed that. I'd be shocked if I did. Especially because Remoraid seems to have decent uh, stats there. Alright, so that didn't matter. It's not very effective. It actually did more than I thought it would do. Sneasel is fast and has good attack for this kind of a matchup, but um, it is still frail. So Aqua Jet's going to be the move to use here. And um, Bubble Beam from Remoraid. And Sneasel's going to be really dumb and use Leer, so... Alright, bad AI for the win, yay. I imagine the AI gets better as you get uh, farther along as well. The Frontier Brains probably have like the best AI in the game. Alright, so that's it guys, we defeated the Battle Factory. That, that was... that went a lot better than I thought it would after that first battle or two. <laughs> um, no, I already have it saved, thank you. Yay! Please give me five battle points. Yay, okay. So we have eight, only 112 to go. All right. You know what I might do, actually, is maybe I'll, um... I don't know, I'll probably do some of this off screen while I'm doing other things, but I wonder if it'd be worth doing... Nah, I probably won't. I was thinking maybe I would do some more of these Battle Tower videos, just like bonus videos, and do like a separate playlist for them. So if you guys want to watch it, you can. Um, and if not, then you will have to. But, um... I kind of think I might rather just play this game and grind while I'm like watching TV. So yeah, I might just do that. But we'll see. If, if that is something you'd really like to see, me doing more Battle Tower and Battle Frontier things in general, let me know, because I can always just do it for fun, or maybe to grind in future games. Um, otherwise, I'll probably just do it off screen. I will come back and do one more video for each of the other three facilities, so you will see that, of course. But when we come back, I'll do one more episode tonight, and we are going to head back to Kanto and um, do some pretty cool stuff there. So thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day or night, and I will see you all right back here for more Pokemon Heart Gold.